are going to continue to happen here too. Yes. We had a good time in prayer. We, uh, we're going through this series on one another, talking about forgiveness, talking about loving one another in practical ways in which we can grow together as a body. Um, as I was reading through this week, I, I was getting excited about uh, the message uh, because I, I, I like to say, uh, sometimes I meet people and, and I find that they're interesting. Any, anybody meet interesting people? Of interesting qualities. I'm working now at, at, at a curry box, and sometimes when I hire people or people come in to apply, and I'm like, you're, you're really interesting. Um, and, and I want to take interest in you. Uh, but uh, as today, we're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 2, and we're going to be talking about being interested in one another. It's going to be a, a quality, hopefully a characteristic of Captain City Church, that we'd be a people that, like we say this on a regular basis, hey, that we don't just say hello on Sunday morning, but that we are in, in encouraging one another daily, that we're loving one another, that we're forgiving one another, and that we're interested in one another. That it's not just, hey, how you doing? But, oh, what's going on in your life? That, how can I come alongside of you, build you up, and encourage you to walk with the Lord? The Bible is really clear on a lot of a lot of things. There's a really clear on the, the character of God, who He is, right? And and sometimes there, there's so there's some lists in here. Last night we were we were looking through Ephesians and, and there's saw some list of things that that we should and shouldn't do as Christians. But there there's some things that maybe the Bible doesn't address that we have to we have to look at the look at the scripture and be able to apply. We need some heavenly wisdom. Anybody need some heavenly wisdom? Like, yeah. and there's some knowledge that we can gain about who God is and, and maybe some scenarios that that are lived out. And then I say, okay, well now I got this situation. You know, uh, I wish sometimes, uh, I was joking with a friend this week, I wish there was a section in the Bible that said, student loan repayment up. You know, like, I wish that, that, that would be, let me think exactly how to do it. You know, we got Dave brands here, things like that, that kind of help us with, with those kind of life decisions. Or um, There isn't a lot in here about, you know, how we should spend the, the minutes of our day. You know, how many minutes should we spend eating or working or exercising or sleeping or how many minutes should we read or uh, on entertainment or conversations with our spouses or with our friends who are around us? Uh, but this is this is why all, all of these reasons are are why we need each other. Why we did this series? Hey, Pastor Bob and Andrew, why why did you guys do this series? Why? Because we believe there's there's wealth of wisdom in the body that God has put us together. He has created us as a body so that we can knit together because we can lean on each other and gain some wisdom, practical wisdom from those that have walked roads before us. Like, hey, how do I live this out? And it starts with us being interested in each other. Find out. Hey, Linda, what, what do you know, Linda? Give me some information. I, I need some wisdom. It's a practical thing. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> I believe it are, as we focus this series on our relational culture at Catholic Church, that we would, we would begin to have a culture that we are truly not just independent of each other, but interdependent on each other as we continue to pursue God. We do, again, believe that if we work out our salvation, we work out our following after Jesus with fear and trembling, there's an individual mandate for us to work out our salvation, but it also calls us, to, calls us together. And as our, as our relationships in this church grow, then we'll be able to increase our ability to look like Jesus. Amen. It requires us to esteem one another's uh, past and present. Because if not, we miss out on the opportunity to look like a pastor of God. Sure. I, I love the fact that we are a multicultural church because there's aspects of different cultures that, that they, they understand and, and get to express a different mm -hmm. character of God. And when I'm around them, ah, I'm like, wow, I didn't think about God in that way. And that, it, it, it encouraged me to grow and to be more like Christ, a bigger sure. picture. So let's look today at Ephesians, uh, sorry, Philippians chapter 2, and we're going to look at the, the main point of the, of the sermon, but we're going we're gonna to look through this passage, the whole chapter, and dig out some good things about it. But the main point of today's message is going to be found in Philippians chapter 2, and we're going to be looking at verse 4. And as we look through the chapter, we'll see four examples of how um, this, this point is lived out. And how people they give an example, we're going to look at Jesus, we're going to look at Paul, Timothy, and Ephroditus, uh, and see how their life lived out this idea of being interested <coughs> in somebody else. So let's look at Ephesians, uh, sorry, Philippians, I'm going to hopefully not say that anymore. We're not in Ephesians, we're in Philippians, uh, Philippians chapter 2, and let's look at verse 4 here. It says this, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Wow. Well, what would be 
be if we, as a church body, in our relationships, where we had a default, if we had an orientation towards others, a default posture of mine would be towards the other and, and not towards myself. Uh, I have to work on that a lot. I don't know about you guys. I have to work on it to say, wow, that I would, I would think after, I would be for the interests of other people, not only my own. I would ask us now that we would pray uh, before we go into the rest of the message, because I need the Lord's help in this message, and I believe uh, we also could use the Lord's help in not being so self-focused, but being focused on the interests of others. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that in this moment, God, that you would do such a deep work in my heart and in our hearts today, that you would free us from the bondage of a self-centered life, but God, that we would be given over to others. God, that we would truly live uh, others-focused. Jesus, you gave such an amazing example. We pray that today we would re receive this challenge from you, and God, that we would truly be a culture that is for another person other than ourselves. Father, we thank you for that, in Jesus' name. If we look at this, Philippians chapter 4, verse 2, um, if we look into the language, and, and sometimes I like to get into word studies and things of that nature, but I look at the original here, and it actually, the word interest is actually a filler. So it would, in the original, it reads this, not looking to your own, but looking to the others. So if we were to maybe put a little paraphrase on this, like you guys are looking at me like I did something wrong here, <laughs> taking out words here in the Bible. But uh, if, uh, to, to look not onto your own, you could paraphrase and say, not just to look for your own financial affairs, not to your own property, not to your own family, not to your own reputation or your education or your own success or your own happiness, or you could fill in the blank there. My own career, my own loves, my own passions, my own interest. Uh, fills it in there. Don't just strategize about or don't just work towards or don't just think out or spy out how your future could look better, but look to the financial affairs, the, the property, the family, the health, the reputation, the education, the success, the happiness of others. Wow, it's a challenge. Yes. It's a challenge. Look, uh, what would it look like to look out for the interest of my wife, of my husband, or even put the interest of my child before myself? What would it look like to put the interest of a stranger, or the person I walk past in the park, or the gas clerk, or the waitress that I that I'm uh, that is serving me at the restaurant? What would it look like if if I were to look for their interest above my own? And immediately when I read this, I say, that's impossible. <laughs> that's hard. That's hard stuff. Right? And apart from a miracle, I believe it is impossible. But the amazing thing is the gospel produces this selflessness yes. in our life. It's a miracle, but, but the walk of a Christian, the work of Christ in us, it doesn't. It allows us to show more interest in somebody else's well-being than myself. It's almost a repeat of exactly what Jesus says when he said, to love your neighbor as yourself. Andrew, you're talking about selflessness again. It's so critical and it's so key to living out the Christian walk that I would put aside my own desires for the sake of somebody else. And maybe this will be repeated in every sermon that we do in this series. But you know what? It needs to get deep inside of us. And I believe it will as we meditate on who Christ is and what he's done for us. So when we're watching TV at night and we just want to spend a little time resting for ourselves, and our child comes in, and, and, and me and Rachel are going to get on this journey soon. We're really, you know, thinking about this exact thing. We're looking and seeing, wow, we can, we're really, our schedule is really based on how much love, how much we like and what we enjoy. Is that when we get a child, we've really been debating about this. When we have a child in our home, things are going to change. You know, is it going to happen anyway? It's going to happen. Leila has his third child this, this year, right? Uh, but, you know, I, I'm tired. I, I like to just, when I get home, and just rest and do nothing. And, and, and what would it look like if I put the interest of my child, my child to be, in front of my own interest and my desire for rest? I mean, what would it look like for me to, get, to put the interest of my neighbor's needs in front of my own needs? What would it look like for me to help uh, another's future greater than my own future? I, I don't... That picture, whatever you can be seeing in your life, I don't know what it's exactly look like, but it looks beautiful. Amen. 
It looks like the gospel. It's an act of Christ. We've got to decide that as an act of Christ, as, as exalting the gospel in our life, as a decision of our will, that we can put the interests of others over the pleasures of our own. And so in this passage in Philippians chapter 2, it gives us a key how we are to do this. So let's look at verse 3. Here's the key. How do we put others above ourselves? How do we put the interests of others above our own? Verse 3 is the key. And it may sound even more impossible than verse 4. But let's look at it. Verse 3. Do not act, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. So what's the key to take interest in them? What's the key to look out for the interests of others? What's the key to look out for my brothers or my sister, or my spouse or my children, my, my co-workers, a stranger on the street? The key is that we would value, we would humble ourselves. Wow, that's a hard word. Humble ourselves and value others above ourselves. See, I know in, in this, uh, this world, I have, I have some talents, and there's other people in this church building that have some talents that I don't have. You know, there's many times um, that I've called on Dion, and I've called on Rajiv for different computer, computer needs. I'm like, I, I don't know, I don't have those skills. Like, I, I totally count them, that's a trick that they have that I, I don't have, and I call on them, hey, can you help me out in this matter? Can, hey, Dion, the server is down again, you know, let me, <laughs> I, I need some help. But, uh, and so it would be crazy for, for Dion or for Rajiv to think of me higher than them in the uh, abilities that they have in their talents, the, the things they went to school for, the things that they, they do on a regular basis for the job. Or, or on the other side, I may turn around and say, hey, um, and, and challenge people, hey, hey, around the kitchen, I, I know my way around the kitchen. I have a, a better skill. I, it's hard for me sometimes when I... I didn't ask about sharing the story. So when I go, when we go... <laughs> i to edit this out of the video. When we go home to, to, to Kentucky and, and Rachel's uh, family cooks for us, and sometimes it's really hard to be, uh, be around and to value their food is better tasting than, than what we can make. Can we agree? We, we can agree on that, right? But, uh, <laughs> but I don't think here this is what Ben's talking about. I, I don't think that in, in Philippians it's just talking about the, the traits or the abilities of, of people. Because on that basis, it's really hard for me to say I have a greater skill at, at things than, than Dion or some of your different professions and things that you've worked hard at. But it's not the traits that we count them worthy of our service. We, we are willing to count them worthy of our service from what they could be, what, who they are. What we count them to be. See, are they... They're, worthy to die for, they're worthy to be inconvenienced for, they're, they're worthy to take interest in their affairs, they're, they're worthy, whether we count them to be, whether, whether uh, their traits allow them to be worthy or not, we count them yes, to be worthy. And sometimes people are really annoying. It's really hard to deal with people that are in need. Let's just be honest. But in, in the attitude of Christ, in the mindset of Christ, we, we say, hey, you, I want to count you worthy of my inconvenience. It's the opposite of a sense of entitlement. Instead of coming around and saying, hey, you owe me, you owe me a certain look when I cross you on the streets. You, you owe me a certain greeting when I come over to your house. You, you owe me a certain thing. Uh, and I'll get mad if you don't pay uh, you owe me to stay in your lane while I'm driving down the highway and to go the correct speed limit. You owe me this. And I'll be mad if you don't pay me what I owe. But the key is to be humble. Amen. To humble ourselves and to value others above ourselves. Amen. The Paul understood that he was a debtor to everyone. He owed everyone and so when he gave his whole life, he went shipwrecked, and he went hungry, and he was in prison, and, and, and he was beaten, and he, he owed them a service to let them know who Christ was. Part of the Christian walk is to be stunned by the grace of God. Yes. As a quality of Paul, to be stunned by the grace of God. Wow, you did, you were so amazing to me that you forgave me, that, that Jesus... 
I was owed hell, but you went to hell for me. You, you paid that price. We have to, if we're going to be able to be interested in the other, we have to be able to preach the gospel to ourselves every day. Wow. Let me be done by the grace of God. And verse 5 says this, that we should have this mindset. Let's look at verse 5. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset of Christ. How are we going to live a life that, that is going to be totally selfless and for the other, to be interested in the other's affair? Uh, we have to have the mindset of Christ. Wouldn't that be a beautiful day? Man, in parenting and in marriage, and in our friendship and in the church, that we would have that same mindset of Christ that, hey, I would be able to devalue myself for the sake of valuing you. That we would say on a regular basis, you're worth it. You're worth the extra mile. You're worth the extra minute. You're worth the extra time. You're worth the extra prayer. You're worth it. You're worth the extra invite. Man, let's strive towards this truth. Let's strive towards this. Verse 4, that we would not look toward our own interests, but to the interests of others. That we would have this mindset. It's possible. We started with the idea that it's impossible in myself. But the Word of God and the hands of the Spirit of God awakens us day by day to who we are in Christ. So as we get the Word in us, we say, yes, Spirit, work this in me. Help me in this. It, it is impossible because I know myself. But in you and by your Spirit, by the Word of God, then it can transform me that I would look at the interest of others over the interest of myself. We see... We see in Scripture these four examples in Philippians of how this is lived out, what this is supposed to look like. How, how do we think about the interests of others? Well, the first, the first warning to us, though, is that this isn't a call for us to be busybodies, for, for us to be just talking about everybody. And there's, there's actually warnings. If you didn't know, that in uh, 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians uh, 3, Verse 11, uh, 1 Timothy uh, 5, 13, and 1 Peter 4, 15. Each one of those uh, was a warning to us. It said, don't be a busybody. <laughs> don't just gossip and get in the interest of others just so you, so you know some insights and you know some witnesses about them with you, right? This is, this is what they call. Don't be interested in each other just so we can, you know, call, call out everybody's weaknesses. And, and, and oh, I actually, it will lead towards, hey, see, we could be interested in it in the affairs of other people, and it would lead towards that pride. It would lead towards that entitlement that, uh, of course, they owe me, because I'm way better than them. I don't, I don't have that issue. So don't, don't take this as a, hey, Andrew just told me I need to know all your business. So I can look better than you, and I can be better. No, I didn't say that. We're going to look at this, four examples. The example of Christ, Paul's example, Timothy's example, and Ephrodite's example of how they live this out. It's fun looking at scripture and seeing the intentionality of the writer. When I look through when I look through the book of uh, Romans, I love how it's how it's the points are made, and then each point after that is kind of lived out or, or fleshed out. Here in Philippians, we will see the exact same thing. The statement is made: Look out for the not only your own, don't look for your own interests, but look for the interests of others. And then Paul then it gives. It, it seems like he just mentioned these four these four things. Well, the example of Jesus is pretty straightforward. It's an exact representation of what this means. But these other ones, he just kind of mentioned it. But it's so neat to look at Scripture and to see how everything is put together in purpose. It reminds me that the Holy Spirit is the one that breathed all Scripture. He inspired it all. So good, so good. So let's look first here at Jesus. So right after uh, verse 5, it says that we should have the same mindset of Christ. So let's look at verse 6. Philippians chapter 2, verse 6. It says this. Have the same mindset of Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant. 
being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and in earth, and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. Jesus, the perfect example of a servant. He didn't consider his very nature, he, he being, being God, didn't consider equality to God something to be used to his own advantage. Yes, I need to be more like Jesus. The quality that I have, the abilities that I have, I didn't use it for my own advantage. He, he didn't consider it something that he could be used. He didn't consider it. He laid down his legitimate entitlements. And he, Jesus, sitting on the this is Jesus, who he is, the Son of God. All that he was, he didn't use it for his own gain. I sometimes struggle with humility, and when I struggle with humility, I have to remind myself, I have to reflect, and I challenge you also to reflect on these verses. Rather, he made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in the human likeness. He humbled himself. What a challenge this morning. What an example of taking on the interests of others, that he would look on the world who was lost and rejected him, who, who the scriptures describe us as the very enemies of Christ, uh, described us as worthless to him. There was no worth in us. I will humble myself and raise them up, serve them, bring life to them, as we sang this morning, bring resurrection to them, restore them, bring healing, bring hope, bring a future. He humbled himself and became obedient even to the point of death, even death on the cross. Man, sometimes I think just getting up off the couch is any convenience for me. <laughs> yeah, just, just moving up my body, just adding one more thing to my schedule. I mean, that's inconvenient. Death is a little inconvenient, I believe. But verses 9 through 11 give us a tip off of what's to come. Now, in this, again, we don't serve or we don't humble ourselves to receive what we are going to receive, but in doing so, we receive it. My eyes are not on the reward, but, I, but the reward comes as I act in obedience. Mm -hmm. Over and over again, it says, it, it, the example is given that God gives grace to the humble. He lifts up and he exalts those in due time, those who humble themselves. If you become invisible, with not an ounce of earthly payback coming to you, mm. try not at all to get exalted in your own, on your own, in this world, right away. Because if you do, if that's your heart, if that's what you said your heart, I will serve because I know that I will receive something. Mm. Whatever you lose on earth, you lost it. But I believe if we have this mindset of Christ, if we take on the mindset of Christ that, that if we will serve, we'll be interested in the affairs of others more than the interest of ourselves, whatever we lose on earth, will be made up in heaven. Yes. We will be with Him, we will be united with Him, we will be blessed with Him, we will be exalted. It's a promise of the Lord to us. Lord, help me remember, help me believe that I can be just like you to serve others, to inconvenience myself, even to the point of death. Because I know that when I do, it exalts you. It exalts the gospel. It's a representation of who he is to us. So Paul continues in writing to the Philippians, not only giving this example of Christ, this example of the gospel, this beautiful example and demonstration of grace. I like how said before, to be stunned by grace. Like, stunned by it. Wow, God. 
were just talking on Wednesday night at our missional community, or Friday night at our missional community, about uh, getting cut off in traffic and how hard uh, for, for one, of the, one of the group members it is that when people cut me off in traffic, that it just boils inside of them. And because they believe they're owed, you know, right traffic law and obedience when they're on the road. And when they aren't owed, when they aren't given that, when they aren't paid right traffic laws of obedience around me, then, then hey, they have a right to get mad at that person because they caused me some interruption in my life. We've been challenging, as a group, we've been challenging ourselves with this. What if they don't owe me anything? But I would serve them, even to the point that forgive them. I'm so stunned by the grace of God that I know, wow, no matter what's done to me on this earth, it's, it's okay. Paul gives a, another example of this, uh, using his own example of himself. Let's look at verse 17. All right, let's, sorry, start in verse 14. 14 says this. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God, without fault, in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like the stars in the sky. What I love about this is, it is living this way, if we create a culture in our relationships that we're more interested in others' affairs than our own, when we live this way, we will shine like the stars in the sky among them. Uh, people will notice there's something different about us in our relations. It is, it's not right, it's not regular, or it's not normal for us to care about our neighbors. Uh, people in our hall, uh, in our apartment complex, are always like kind of taken, about, uh, taken aback by the way that we were interested in them. And went over to the one of our neighbors and gave them some food the other night, and they're like, "Wow, it was like so so amazing to them that we would consider uh, even caring for them." You know, we're so busy in life. We'll shine. We'll look like Jesus. Verse sixteen: As you hold firm to the word of life, and then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on, on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. Paul is an amazing uh, man of God who not only wrote for us much of the what we would call the New Testament, but was a church planner and established churches in all these different areas and, and would go back to the different areas and encourage them and the Lord send letters and, and build up the church. He, he spent his whole life building up other people. And this the picture here in, in verse 17 is of him taking an interest of others over himself. He says, he says, but even if I'm being poured out like a drink offering on a sacrifice and service becoming Sorry, service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. Even if I'm wasted away and I spend all that I am, all of my energy, all of my resources on helping you know who Jesus is or building you up in Christ or, or allowing you to follow Christ more, if I'm wasted away like a, like a sacrifice poured out, it's worth it. I'll be glad. I'll be glad. I'll rejoice. Paul, over his life, he, 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 he would say this. He said, I, I would love to be present with Christ. It would be great. Christ, God, if you would just take me now. But if I'm here, if I stay on earth, man, it's for your glory. It's for your yeah. purposes. It's for the advancement of faith, yeah. whatever way it may come. And that's the, that's the first four character part of life. That's a, that's a, a person who understands uh, verse four. I want to take the interest of others over my own interests. Let's continue here. Another example is given in Timothy. Let's look at verses 19 through 22. Timothy was a young man that uh, walked with, with Paul, and Paul trained him and, and, and developed him and discipled him into a leader, and, and Paul eventually gave him a, a church uh, to over to to oversee and to develop and to encourage in Christ and this is what Paul had to say about Timothy 
in Philippians 2, starting in verse 19. It says this, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about him and about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. For everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I, as soon as I see how things go with me. I like this about Timothy. There's nobody like him. The earlier verse says that they'll, they'll, they'll shine like stars in the sky. There's nobody like this guy, Timothy. Why is it? Because he could pray like nobody else could pray? Why was it? Because he saw miracles like nobody else saw miracles? Why? Because he could preach and he could bring the house down? Was it because he could lead worship amazingly like Levi? Or was it, what, what, what was it about him? There's nobody else like him who will show genuine concern for the welfare of others. And he was a verse 4 kind of guy. Genuine concern for the welfare of others. Everyone, this is, this is like common, verse 21, we can say this is the same about today. It's common for everybody to take, uh, to take interest on their own. Everyone looks out for their own interests. That's, that's normal. You want to be weird, you want to stand out, you want to be a different, you want to be like Craig? Take interest in the affairs of others. I would hope uh, for Captain City Church, for our relationships, for our one another, for our body, that this would not be a rare thing. I don't believe it is. I, I believe we do have genuine relationships. We have genuine interest in one another. But I believe the challenge for God is that that would grow. That it would become part of us. That, that we would lose ourselves for the sake of one another. That verse 4 will be done in us. Let's look at here, the, the, the last example, another example here is Ephroditus. Ephroditus, I, I practice saying this. Ephroditus. I think they just have names like Andrew, Peter, John, Bill. Heather. No. All right. All right, that's a big inside joke a lot of you guys don't know what's going on right now. All right, so first, um, so let's look at Philippians chapter two, uh, verse twenty-five. But I think it is necessary to send back to you Ephrodite, my brother, co-worker and fe a fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs, for he longs for all of you and is disinterested because you heard. He, or sorry, disinterested, distressed, because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died, but God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but also on me, to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad, and I may have less anxiety. So then, welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor, people and honor people like him, because he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life to make up for the help you yourselves could not give me. Love this figure of Ephroditus. He's a messenger, he's a servant. He, he was serving, uh, and, and a fellow, Paul called him a, a co worker, a fellow, fellow soldier. He was with them in the work of, of giving himself to others. Uh, but I love you, this little picture of him in verse 26. For he longs for you all. He, he longed to be with them. He longed to encourage them. He longed to be with them. And I love this. And is distressed because you heard he was ill. It shows a little bit about his character. I don't want you guys to be worried about me. <laughs> it's unfortunate that you guys heard about my illness because I don't want you guys worried. I don't want to burden you with my sickness. Man, that's a, that's a verse 4. I don't know if I can go that low. I like being cared for when I'm sick. <laughs> I don't mind people coming by and getting me a, 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 cup, of, a cup of soup, you know, if that's a good and appropriate thing to do, or a get well card. Or... Man, he's about to die. 
And I, I don't want them to know about it. I don't want to stress them out. I don't want it to be a burden on them that I was in a lot. I'm sorry that you guys had to hear about it. He was so concerned for their well-being. So concerned for the advancement of the gospel. So concerned for the affairs of others, for the continuing of the work, that he didn't want them to worry too much about them. And you may find yourself in a, a place of need this morning. And say, well, I, I need people to be interested in me. And even in that point, the challenge is for us to be interested more in the others' affairs. And what others are going through. Even more so than the need that we even have ourselves. Mm -hmm. I say again, Jesus help me. Build this character in me. Build this character in me. Let me be one that is found dying to serve. So here we see four beautiful examples of how this is lived out. Jesus, he didn't view entitlement better than coming for us. Man, it's a beautiful picture. Beautiful picture of what this looks like. Paul, it's a beautiful picture that he would say, every day I'm going to look out for the spiritual growth of others. I want to give my life, I want to pour out everything I got so that others may know him. Timothy, beautiful picture. There's nobody like Timothy. Man, he's concerned for who you are and what you're going through. I'm going to send them to you because you need them. Ephrodite is, I want to serve even to the point of death. I don't even want to burden people with what i got going on. Because I want them to know Christ and them to be united and them to be served. What a beautiful picture. Yes. And Capital City Church, what would it look like? A beautiful picture. As we get this verse 4, that we would be more concerned for others' interests than my own. And that we, we would strive for the interests of others. It would look wonderful. It would look united. It would look like Christ. It would look shiny, like it says in verse 26. Right? It would look good. I don't know about you, but when I hear this message, when I read these passages, I don't know if you say, you know what, I need help with this. Yeah. I'm, I'm still on that first part that Angie said, it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible for me. I don't know how I'm going to do this. In Christ, it can be worked out. The Word of God and the hand of the Spirit can work it out in us that we would look more and more like the Scripture of Christ. Are you challenged this morning? Yes. Yeah. Are you encouraged this morning? Yes. Inspired that we could have this community, that we would look towards one another's interests, we could build off one another, we could build each other up into Christ. Me too. I'm challenged. I'm inspired. And I need help. I need the Holy Spirit. I need him to build me up. I need him to shine me up that I would look more like Jesus. So I think the appropriate response this morning is for us to pray. For us to call upon the name of the Lord. For him to come and do this work of, that only the Spirit could do in me. That my spirit, myself would die, and that his Spirit would rise up in me. This morning, let's do that. Let's pray. God, we, we thank you for these opportunities that we have to look into your word. Father, I thank you that you describe your word like a mirror. God, it, it reveals who we are. And God, sometimes I look at myself in the mirror, I look at myself in the word, and I find that, that I'm still a little ugly. I still don't shine brightly all the time. Father, Lord, we thank you, Father, for your word this morning. This verse 4 that says that we should look uh, towards the interests of others over our own interests. God, we see that the key in all of this is that we would humble ourselves. Jesus, we see that you were the perfect example of that. You humbled yourself. You didn't consider equality with God something to be used for your own advantage, but you served even to the point of death, raising us up, exalting us. So Father, this morning I pray that there would be a divine sense of grace in us. A divine sense of your Holy Spirit working in us to make us more like you. Father, we need you. We need your help. This morning, again, not only in song, but Father, in prayer, we say we need you. We need your help. Come consume our hearts. Come consume us. 
Make us like you. Father, burn away all of the uh, things, all of the impurity. Father, Lord, and make us like that pure, shiny gold, Father. Burn away the dross, Father, Lord, and make us pure. Father, help us in times where serving others will require inconveniences. Father, serving others when we're tired. Serving others even when we're in need. God, help give us strength. God, we, even in those moments, Father, we would find strength. We would find the strength that we need to take interest in others over ourselves. Father, may our relationships in our homes and our, with our spouses, Father, Lord, and with our children be strengthened. Father, may the relationships with our neighbors and with strangers and with our waitresses and with our co-workers be strengthened. And Father, in the church, Father, Lord, would our relationships be strengthened. Father, Lord, that there would be such unity in our serving one another. There would be such unity in our taking interest in one another. Father, Lord, that as a church, we would shine brightly. That we would be an example, Father, Lord, to, to those who come in. Father, Lord, for those who surround us in this neighborhood. Father, Lord, in this city. Father, Lord, may we be an example of what it means to serve one another, to think of another above ourselves, to take interest. Father, help us in this. Strengthen us in this, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I believe that if we pray this that, that prayer and we continue to have that heart, God, do this in me, that he will work in us. God does describe it. He will give grace to the humble. First part of humbling is saying, I don't got it yet. I still need help. So we can humble ourselves before the Lord, and He raises us up. He exalts us. He builds us. In us. So continue to pray those prayers. And, and I believe also reflect on this passage, especially the passage describing of Jesus. I love that word that, that Paul was, he was stunned by grace. I'm like, I want to be stunned by grace. I want to be stunned by the work of Christ in me. And I want to be stunned by grace. That we can live, that we can live for Him. Life. Amen. Amen. I pray that your week would be blessed. Uh, if you can, I um, I want to do a sign up for the uh, cobblers next. It'll be next Monday. So if you say, yeah, I can make a cobbler or two, whether you, you don't have to be there present Monday night, we want you to be. If you can, make yourself available to be with the servant, uh, to be with the of the students and to serve them, that would be great. But if you say, hey, you know what, I can make a cobbler and an 8 by 12 can, uh, that would feed probably about 10, 10 or more people, uh, one scoop each. So we need about, I'm thinking about 10 cobblers. Uh, we can, you know, portion it out as it goes, but about 10 cobblers. So uh, we have at least five or six people that say, yeah, I want to do it. Um, so if you're one that says, yeah, I can do it, uh, I'm going to run back and get a piece of paper and get a pen, and we'll, we'll sign up so that we can, so that we can go ahead and, and serve these students and continue to be a part of, of their growth and their spiritual walking. If giving them a little bit of food tells them we care about them, that we're a church that's here that cares about their brother. So let me pray a blessing over us. God, I bless your people today to be full of your spirit, Father, to be full of your word. Father, may you be ever present with them. May they sense, Father, Lord, your nearness. God, may they receive from you day in and day out the grace they need to live for you. Father, we thank you for this. In Jesus' name. Pray that you be blessed this week. Amen.